SUVs are contributing to nearly 50% of the car sales in India this year. That's one body style dominating nearly half of what is one of the biggest car markets. Well, not surprising then that every year, manufacturers are launching more and more SUVs at more price points and in more sizes. And the extra here is the newest and the smallest SUV from Hyundai. But is this really an SUV? And what does it bring to the table? Let's find out. Call them micro SUVs, mini SUVs or anything else. But you simply cannot ignore this new breed of cars priced below the 10 lakh rupee mark. They are styled to look like SUVs and have the ground clearance too. Which is what makes a lot of buyers favour them over hatchbacks and sedans. And the extra could probably fuel the growth of this new breed. Especially since it does look like an SUV. But more importantly, it looks very eye-catching. This is an all-new design language from Hyundai and I must admit I really like the front end of the Xta, Especially the grille design, the way the split headlamps have been executed and the attention to detail, they all really come together to make the Xta look very appealing from the front. And it's quite small, but yes, it is very proportionate and overall, I do like the proportions of this SUV. Hyundai has consciously ensured the Xta has the appearance of an SUV. So be it the tall hood, side profile with roof rails or the 185mm ground clearance, the x qualifies as a mini SUV in our books. The gloss black plastic on the grille and textured design elements adorning it also help it look premium. And while having a car's name etched across the grille does not sound like a good idea on paper, the execution on the x looks quite appealing. The edge shaped DRLs look nice, though having them wrap around onto the front fender and the sharp crease following them looks a little polarizing. The Xta is only 3,815mm long, but it looks very proportionate from the sides, while the 15-inch alloy wheels on the top variant that we drove look nice and also add more flair to the sides. The rear is good looking too, especially thanks to the gloss black applique on the C-pillar and in between the tail lamps. The tail lamps integrate the same edge pattern as the DRLs at the front, while the Foss kid plate completes the SUV stance nicely. Overall, the Xta thus looks very appealing, especially in this shade of bright blue. The interiors here are very similar looking to what we've seen on the Grand Alton Neos, so there's an air of familiarity. Having said that, the plastics feel good, fit finish levels are really good, and overall, this does not feel like a sub 10 lakh rupee SUV from inside at all. The dashboard gets a nice looking texture that adds to the premium feel, besides housing the 8 inch touchscreen that looks sharp and bright. The fully digital instrument cluster is the same as what we've seen in other Hyundai cars and looks good, though I still miss the good old needles for the speedometer and tachometer. The seats are well bolstered and wrapped in good looking leatherette covers and even bear the extra name, which adds to the cabin's premium feel. What's also worth noting here is how well space inside the cabin is managed, especially given that the extra is less than 4 meters long. Shoulder room and space around the driver's cockpit is impressive as is the knee room and leg room at the rear, helped by the fact that the seat backs for the front seats are scooped out. Boot volume is impressive too at 391 litres, and Hyundai has done an excellent job of managing space inside the Xta despite its compact dimensions. Hyundai has always been known to offer the most exhaustive feature list in its cars, but this time it feels like they've hit the ball out of the park. Because there's a lot of features in this SUV that you would not really expect in this segment. You've got a wireless charging pad, well, an electric sunroof, and a dash cam with front and rear facing cameras that record full HD videos. The top variant we drove is also equipped with automatic projector headlamps, keyless entry, automatic climate control, wireless charging, and two USB ports at the front, one being the faster Type C port for quick charging, besides the regular Type A one that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. You also get voice commands with multi language support connected technology with over-the-air updates, inbuilt navigation and very interestingly, multi-language support for the multi-information display that sits between the tachometer and speedometer too. The x is powered by the same tried and tested 1.2-litre four-cylinder Kappa petrol engine that we've seen on cars like the Grand Atten Neos, Aura and the Venue as well. The outputs are the same at 83 PS and 140 Nm and of course the engine feels as smooth and as refined as ever. The transmission options are the same as well because you get a 5-speed manual or a 5-speed AMT. The AMT version gets paddle shifters too and this is not just a segment first, this is an industry first because the x is the first car in the country to club paddle shifters to an automated manual transmission. 
I only drove the AMT version and while the gearbox still has the lag we see in automated manual gearboxes, having paddle shifters helps in terms of convenience and in adding to the X-Ter's fun to drive quotient as well. It would have been very interesting to see the Extra also get the option of the 1 litre turbocharged petrol engine for its performance, but that would have bumped up the car's cost significantly. That said, the 1.2 litre 4 cylinder petrol engine feels peppy and offers quick acceleration. Given that the Extra will spend quite a bit of time at crawling speeds in bumper to bumper traffic, the strong bottom end grunt from the engine certainly helps. Overall engine performance is linear and the Extra accelerates smoothly almost all the way to its red line. So overall, the Kappa engine does help in making the Extra fun to drive. When it comes to the dynamics, the Extra is standard Hyundai affair as it feels confident from behind the wheel, has a stable feel at highway speeds and stays planted around corners as well. It's not exactly sporty but it certainly delivers on the handling front. But what really cements this little Hyundai's positioning in my head as an SUV is its ground clearance of 185mm and the right quality. The ground clearance helps when driving on broken roads or off tarmac and I was really impressed with how easily the Exeter lets you tread off-road thanks to its ground clearance and compact footprint both. Add to that the car's lightweight and you have a package that's confident and easy to maneuver even in tricky conditions. And besides offering a confident feel, the Exeter's suspension also soaks up ruts and potholes well, making for a ride quality that's very impressive to say the least. The Exeter also handles well at highway speeds and offers a planted feel, rounding off the dynamics rather well. Hyundai seems to have made a habit of making cars that will appeal to a wide audience and take a lot of boxes irrespective of what the buyer is looking for. And the Exeter here is the latest name to join that list. Prices are introductory but begin from a very inviting 6 lakh rupees X showroom and go up to 10 lakh rupees X showroom. These are very competitive and in my books, the Exeter could prove to be a disruptor because this car will definitely have a lot of hatchback and compact sedan buyers take a look at it as well, especially with its kind of feature list. So like I said at the start, SUVs are really dominating the Indian car market at the moment and this one here will certainly continue that trend forward. <laughs>